live shortly. And seems like we're getting maybe some people on board. It's exciting. And um, we'll see who joins. Going to send out a little update to people and uh, see what happens. Let's see, this is sort of a test run today. So, if nobody joins, I am okay with that. Just want to make sure that this is indeed the <laughs> link I sent out. Meet.keanu.im, Clean Insights Live. Hopefully my setup will not crash or have any other problems. And hopefully the quality is good. This is really a test run for sure to see how this whole experiment might work. I was having some issues earlier with resolution being too low with video crash, OBS crashing, with um, what else was happening? Um, oh, the video sync local loopback, not going back to, not showing up in Jitsi Meet. Warmer, uh, cleaner, but your mind has hot water in it. Oh, hello. Hello. Do you see me floating over my code? I do, it's crazy. <laughs> what is happening? Pretty exciting. Oh my gosh, what did you do? I just learned from all the best gamers out there who do this for live, uh, let's play live streams. Look, I can do like, whoa. Oh my gosh. Dun, 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 dun. And you just like took out your background. I can move graphics around, I can resize, I can add text. What? I can play video. Let's see if I can play video. Hold on. <coughs> Here comes the video trailer. Maybe a tummy ache tomorrow. Open broadcast studio, OBS Soda studio. Soda pop and pink lemonade are as important as peanuts so you, for the you elephant. Basically, have a now, folks, step video right this broadcast way to the studio bigger, on the desktop, more and you can combine sources, show, and then you can do it back into a stream. And plenty of time to see it all. Oh. Your attention, please, to the local. Well, I'm, re I'm recording too, yeah, yeah so I, this is recording, we're live streaming. I could also be live streaming simultaneously to Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, as well as recording, as well as doing Jitsi Meet all at once, if my computer can handle it, which I'm not sure. So, um, but yeah, so thanks for joining. I'm just going to, you know, we're going to see... We have probably some new guests, some new people. And hopefully, now, ladies and new faces are just lurkers. <laughs> in amazing gymnastic feats along. Agro performers on the aerial bar. Sure. Here like come the comics of the air in 
fancy uh, video production skills here. So. Using open source software, we're using OBS Studio, I'm using on a Ubuntu machine with Jitsi Meet and uh, all open. So yeah, uh, I mean, I'm recording this, so we'll post this later on the YouTube channel. And, uh, but overall, I think I have all the pieces working. Hopefully everything remains stable. And uh, yeah, this is this could be, as I was, I was saying before, can be plugged into YouTube and, and Twitter, Twitch, and all these other live stream platforms simultaneously, which is pretty fun. But right now I'm just doing it for Jitsi Meet and then recording it. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. Uh, give people a bit. The best thing that this caused me to do is uh, actually crack open the Clean Insights Android SDK, which I hadn't really touched uh, in a little while, and got all the dealt with compiling issues and updated to Android X and really made sure it's up to date with all the latest tooling. And, uh, so the demo. I don't. This is. Um, Your attention, please. Our demo app is pretty hilarious for um, Clean Insights, which is, well, maybe we'll be able to see it. Yeah, you can probably see it well enough here. So the demo app is um, basically a hot or not, like a, a swipe, t a Tinder for dogs and cats. And so what, what, we're using what we're using Clean Insights for is tracking um, just the amount of of swipe lefts and swipe rights, you know. So overall, like, we want to understand, are, are people finding things overall that they like versus not, but we don't want to know more than that, right? So, sort of, um, and that way we're not sort of tracking all the individual swipes by each person, we're just tracking an overall kind of understanding usage of that feature. So that's one thing, that's the main aspect of the demo. And you also get this. You when you when you start it up, you get now uh, you get a, a little prompt on the top that's really funny, that says "Tap here to enable us to improve the user experience." And when you tap on that, is when the you know metrics start kicking in. So, um, it's it's a very poor state of it, but in the code at least, it, it does give the idea of. How built into the SDK we have ideas related to consent UI now, because it's part of the UI you call bigger, better, to, to so, it's like we're getting some more friends joining us. If everyone who's coming in, if you, if you want to say hi on camera, you can. Otherwise, happy as a lurker here on the stream, um, and you can always type in the chat. Um, questions I see. Uh, oh, I should add myself in. in producing That's me. Betty Rich, oh, queen there of the we air go. In a sensational display of breathtaking Ian is here. Without the net Thank below. you for joining, Benjamin. Um, yeah, this is really just a dry run through, or an actual run through, a wet run through, a real run through with coffee. Cheers. Less early and folks. Now, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the boys group in amazing gymnastic feats along. Agile performers on the, the aerial of the And um, I'll just wait a few more minutes, but the, what we're going to be doing today um, is going through live through the, the um, Android code to show just some of the conceptual aspects that and how they're implemented in what really is the prototype code and what we saw so much fun to do. Um, but the, everything you can read about it in ClinicSense.org, um, we can, which I should change my text here to ClinicSense.org, here we go, boom. 
um, we will um, you know be just talking through specifically in some code examples today and uh, live coding extravaganza here <laughs> Let's code. Code with me. Code with Nate. Children are welcome. And maybe a tummy ache tomorrow. Soda pop and pink I'm lemonade excited. are as important Hi. as for the elephant. Now, folks, step right this way to the bigger, better, more exciting right. sideshow. Exciting show you've ever seen. And plenty of time to see it all. Okay. Your attention, please, to the Two more minutes, and the show will begin. The big top is coming in. Da -da -da -da. Introducing Miss Betty Rich, queen of the air, in a sensational display of breathtaking aerial feats without the net below. Oh, my shirt is part of the green screen. Huh? And now, ladies and gentlemen, no, it's just the green screen chroma key is picking up my shirt, and so the, the backdrop, the backdrop is showing through. It's, it's close enough in color, I guess. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop that video source because I'm sure it's adding more strain on my computer, and I will put this down here. And I'm going to, I will make myself smaller. Um, Carrie, could you mute your mic as long as you're not speaking? That would be great. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I thought it was. Um, yeah, and I'm today, uh, uh, this is the first time I've done like live coding uh, stuff. And I know the way to do it is with the magic of. OBS, Open Broadcast Studio, which is a pretty amazing um, uh, piece of open source software, free software perhaps even, um, that allows you to mix so many different signals together on your desktop um, and rearrange them live. And then using v video for Linux to video sync, a loopback device, you loop it all back into a local video device. And then in Jitsi, you choose that as your camera. And um, and then in your camera, you can also set a green screen chroma key. So I have green behind me. So then I'm floating over the code, which makes it more engaging, I think. Um, you could uh, plug in all sorts of different videos. Uh, so if you wanna play uh, demo videos, you can. You can sort of see the outline here because my green screen isn't perfect. Um, it's. I mean, it's fun. it's both fun and powerful once you figure out how to use all of this. Um, you can simultaneously, I'm recording locally, and also I could stream to YouTube and Twitch all at once from one spot. So this is kind of how you do like mega broadcasts everywhere. I um, I think you can also uh, have plugins where you bring in chat rooms, like you link it into a chat channel so that like the chats show up from people. I don't know if I can pull it, I can't pull in your chats, but um, the idea would be to pull in chats and questions live. I think you can do it from Twitter. I could do hashtag clean insights, though you'd have to moderate it. But you know, this is all stuff that, um, you know, gamers have figured out a long time ago. Um, so I'm just using it for this purpose. So I'm a, I'll get started because your time is all very precious. Thank you for joining us for our first live uh, work, work session here. Um, feel free to pop in with audio too because I'm gonna be over in my IDE and I, I, I'll listen for questions. I hear a little sound, but um, you know, this, this whole month long symposium is a real experiment in trying to find ways for busy people to engage as they can um, I've had other amazing events that people have had as three-day intensive live stream events. And boy, I really just can't manage that with my uh, uh, family and homeschooling. And I know most of Guardian Project is in similar um, space. And, and also, do we have the time and energy just to focus like that right now? Um, so we're kind of spreading it out and we're experimenting with different formats. So today, um, 
we're doing the live code with me uh, format. And what I'm showing you is my Android IDE here. And um, it may be blurry. That's another thing we're working on. But what I wanted to show is, is to walk through the code of like clean insights is two parts. One, it, it's a concept. It's a thing to gather around about this question of like, should we measure? How should we measure? What should we measure? Who's been successful at measuring? And in particular, with a focus on human rights and internet freedom, though that's what we care about. But in, in we hope it has broader impact as well. And we know, you know, we have um, Ian here from the uh, Tor Metrics team, um, and uh, and also, you know, in the community at Tor, and also with a long history with other software projects. And he has, you know, the Tor Metrics is a project that we care about. Um, greatly as an inspiration because they kind of have done this for a long time in a way that we think is done well. How do you measure an anonymity network, um, for instance, is a great question. Clean Insights, the part two of Clean Insights is an actual SDK for developers that were at the start of building. And what we have is a prototype for Android. So we're, 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 we have a long way to go, um, but the prototype for Android is very interesting and does work and as of last night has been updated for Android SDK 29. So the, the first thing to understand is that Clean Insights is a client software SDK that um, sits on top of existing backend infrastructures for gathering data. So we're not building our own server or dashboard. Um, we're building improved ways on the clients, be it a desktop app, mobile app, server infrastructure for um, gathering and perhaps cleaning and aggregating data in ways that are privacy preserving on the edge. Um, in this case, what we're looking at is the Clean Insights PWIC SDK, um, which is now PWIC is a open source uh, dashboard and more, more web analytics infrastructure. It's now called Matomo, um, uh, but Matomo is a great kind of open source way to host your own Google Analytics, as they say. And so, this version is built to work with PWIC on the back end. I think we may move to an architecture where we have a general Clean Insights SDK that then you can connect to different backends. Um, but our focus initially was to make this work with PWIC, which is now Matomo. The um, uh, first concept is that you have a Clean Insights application object um, that you extend your application from potentially and then within there, you have something called a measurer. And so measurers are, um, you know, is a, a thing, an instance of an object that you use in your mobile app to, to record measurements. So that's one important piece. Um, the, you also have a, a, a site ID and a backend measure URL with Matomo. Um, and what we've added to that is a certificate pin. So one of the first things we were focused on is how do you make analytics more secure? Can you add you know, TLS hardening? Can you add pinning? Can you add um, onion routing? So that when you're connecting to a centralized infrastructure, you're not harming the user by having a very insecure connection to that infrastructure or a easily surveilled. Um, it doesn't help if you have a, a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer onion Bluetooth application like Briar if your measurements are all being pinged to a centralized user, uh, a, a service where you're flagging, you know, uh, oh, these are all Briar users, so that's not good. So that's one interesting thing right away is that kind of hardening of the transport layer. Um, another thing is this idea of um, the dispatcher. And so a dispatcher is how often do you um, store or how often do you transmit measurements to the server? And one thing that you will notice and know from um, a lot of web analytics is like it's constantly chattering back to the server almost in real time, you know, and that's a feature that you can see as users are, you know, heat maps in real time, you can see uh, as users' mouse cursors are moving, um, that sort of real-time heartbeat. Um, I think there's a, a service called Chartbeat um, that, that tracks in that way. And that, again, causes a lot of problems in for many users. Um, namely, you know exactly when they're using the app, first of all. You know exactly where they are when they're using the app. There's a lot of metadata you, you wouldn't want to 
send that if you're chattering that much back to the server. So um, it's also that you know maybe you're working with offline apps that don't have constant connections to the internet. Maybe you're um, you don't want to send data in real time. You want to measure and then aggregate and process and then send aggregate values back. Um, so in our dispatcher, we use something called QFile, which I believe comes from um, was a project from Square or from yeah Square. Um, and it's a really nice sort of long-term queue, disk-based queue. You're just storing all these measurements for weeks, for months, um, however you, long you want to store in the queue file. And then when you dispatch them, you would process them and send them. So you can set a dispatch interval that is quite long, or you can, or you can manually call dispatch. So we've basically enabled uh, measurements to be batched over time and to be disconnected from specific locations where you're using the app. And that also that helps for a lot of reasons. Again, um, maybe you only dispatch when you detect there's a connection, for instance, to the internet, um, as opposed to trying to ping um, you know, all the time, and so forth and so on. So that sort of disconnected use is another piece. A next piece that's interesting is what we call thresholds. And so a threshold is a, some limitation that can be applied to when to measure. And really, it could be anything. Um, and we have some ideas around this. But this is sort of limiting measurements to only when needed. And this might be something the user decides. It might be something that de the developer themselves decides. And so thresholds, we have a base threshold class. And the idea in the SDK is we would offer a number of easily configurable thresholds for measurement, but also that developers could, could extend that and implement their own uh, thresholds. Um, this is important because uh, if you listen to the interview I did with Arturo from Uni, you'll see that um, he said, if you gather too much data, you'll just be overwhelmed by data and not know what to do with it. So it's important to think about what get data you're gathering and when you're gather gathering it. It's also this idea of like kind of gradual, ongoing, real-time opt-in and opt-out that maybe helps you build trust. So here's one threshold is a date threshold. Um, is it between this date, time and date, and this time and date? You know, so so maybe it's a time frame. Um, only measure a certain time of day. Maybe, maybe the user says, "I want to be measured for one day." So you implement a date threshold based on uh, a certain time limit they've agreed to. Maybe you know, there's a a time-based measurement threshold. Um, low bandwidth threshold. Um, this actually hasn't been implemented, but the idea that you could have something measure kind of throughput and say mm, uh, only measure when throughput to the server is bad and maybe you only want it and, and so you would automate that and say you know have some way of testing connectivity to a certain endpoint and measuring that um, and then enabling um, that to measurement to start um, or some other kind of network conditions are in a bad spot session length threshold is um, how long to measure for. So maybe you pop up and say, hey, can we measure you for the next minute? Because we think the application is, you know, you could be helpful if you let us measure you for the next minute or five minutes rather than opt in forever. Um, there's a bunch of other kind of measurement ideas we have. This is what we've implemented so far. The um, last piece is the um, consent. Um, user interface that it will be part of the SDK. Um, right now, we have it's it's very simple in this prototype. Um, the we have some more code in some of the other uh, sample apps, but the idea that you would just have a built-in way to kind of say, "Show me this type of consent," or "Here's my threshold," show me a consent for this kind of threshold, and we would automate that and have kind of pleasing, effective user interface that the developer could rely on at different times throughout their apps to engage in informed consent. Again, if you listen to the podcast with Arturo of Uni, we talked about the pop quiz consent. So there's a lot of great ideas potentially for consent and that's something that Carrie, um, who's here, the OK Thanks team, the design track of the Symposium Extraordinaire will be focusing on discussing this idea of um, more dynamic informed consent. 
So we're excited to be able to share that. And the last piece, which is actually we had a lot of code for it, but I'm not going to show it today because it's the most complicated. You'll see is rapport. And really rapport is how we implement differential privacy right now in the SDK, which is adding random noise into measurements. Um, uh, and we're using the Google rapport code, which has a native library. Um, and there's uh, essentially you add some configuration and then you configure it with a secret and a probability and number of cohorts, you know, how many other people are participating in this pool of differential private noise, um, and then it will um, calculate, you know, in inject the appropriate uh, amount of noise into the measurement. I'm doing a terrible job uh, um, explaining this, but Professor Cynthia Dwork, who just won the Donald Knuth Prize of 2020, is a great source to go to. Um, there's also um, the open uh, differential privacy project um, at Harvard. We'll hopefully have someone on from there. They're having a conference this week as well, and we're going to bring some of those folks in to talk about the magic of this stuff, but the reality of how it can be used. What we wanted is something easy to integrate, and that's our. we're trying to achieve that still. It also only works if you have a certain threat, uh, amount of users, like 100,000 or a million or a certain amount of measurements. So. The goal is that you can just say encode and then on the server, you know, have tools to process that data. So that is a quick walkthrough of the, the code in the SDK as of today. You'll also see um, we have NetCypher integrated, which is how we integrate with Tor if the user has Orbot, and we're going to look at more ways to integrate on that. The, um, I'm going to jump to the sample app now to show that. And um, maybe just for fun now, I will make myself much larger. Hello. This should be much bigger now. Um, and show you this fun sample app. I should be, I, sh I wish I could live stream. I know I probably could live stream my phone, but I'm, I'm hitting threshold of complexity here that I can't handle. So I'm going to open the app. Um, okay. Well, this is, so the first thing at the top, there's a little alert pops up. And it's the consent UI, and it basically says, I'll see if I can show that again, and my green screen is doing interesting things here. Um, with the consent UI, uh, it says, help us measure you, tap here to be measured. Um, it's not great, but that's part of the SDK. So you get that kind of built-in ability. And again, if I had some threshold set, it should react to those and create different kinds of UI for engaging the user. So now measurements engaged um, because I tapped on that. And what this app is, is a Tinder for pets. <laughs> I guess finding a pet. Um, and so I can swipe left or swipe right, uh, depending on which animals I like, if I'm a dog person or a cat person. Um, and this was part of the original Clean Insights team at the assembly program at, at Berkman Center, Berkman Klein Center at Harvard imagine this awesome demo. Um, we had a web version as well. So maybe imagine that I as the app developer didn't want to log every single you know response by every single user over time. But I did want to know in general are are people hap finding matches? You know, in general, um, are we are we getting the swipe left? To like, I don't, I don't know dating apps. Are we swiping left? Swiping left? Um, are people finding those kind of that happiness? Um, and sure, there's other ways in the system. But imagine I had a, a totally kind of ephemeral transaction system where I didn't want to keep a record of a matches in the long term. But I just want to know overall in the system, are people finding the pets of their dreams? Um, so as that's what we're doing over here is we're as we're swiping left and swiping right the app is aggregating a count um, a measurement total of each interaction and then that's being called in the measurer and being queued up and then once a week i can um, <clears throat> dispatch that to the server and so i get a weekly aggregate count from each user of their totals and then I imagine on top of that, if we were adding differential privacy randomness uh, into that mix, 
um, you would still get the statistically kind of significant overall measurement that would be accurate, but you know you wouldn't be able to say, ah, Nathan liked ten dogs and five, you know, or, or Nathan was the person who really didn't like anything, you know, what? Let's go after Nathan because he didn't like anything. Um, you couldn't say that specifically, so that you, know, you can't link it back to a specific person. So that's the the demo app and. Um, the um, this is connecting then to a backend Matomo, a vanilla out of the box Matomo instance um, that we'll be talking about in a future work session. And if I have Orbot on, it can use Orbot and say, "Oh, you have Orbot. Let's go over Tor." And um, you know, maybe some of the other pop-ups would be imagine a threshold of you've said no every single time and maybe then the consent UI pops up and says, hey, uh, you seem unhappy. <laughs> Can we add you to our measurements? So let me get back to the code here and I will open the sample app and show how some of this is done. So first I have my demo app extends clean insights application. I've set a get measure URL, which is this server here, which actually doesn't exist anymore. So this, this code is a little out of date, but we will be having a new live server up um, that will be for everyone to utilize. Um, I have a certificate pin, pin, so we check the pin to ensure no man in the middle attacks um, and just increase the security overall. And I initialize clean insights so that I can start, say, doing local measurements or doing what I need to be ready to measure once the user um, says, yeah, please use my measurements. So that's how we get started for now, pretty straightforward. There's some other settings around, I think, using uh, Tor or setting, setting those things enabled. Um, so then in the demo activity, which is the main application UI, there's a bunch of code for setting up this the UI, which you don't need to look at. Um, the piece here is about the consent UI. So in the UI kind of flow, I ask, I say, oh, give me a new consent UI and show consent dialog. If the user taps on it, then I then set the domain to my actual, say, live domain, and I show some user interface saying, awesome. So of course they could write a custom user interface or no user interface, the application developer, or you could rely on the consent UI that we will build into the SDK to make your life easier. And, and again, with different thresholds, um, and we, we could have that show at different times um, and with different ways. So we're, again, we're really excited about making that simple and advancing that um, and figuring out just how much the user wants to know, wants to be bothered, but you can also totally control the, this on your own. The same with like when to dispatch, right? So I'll show that later. We could automate that or you could have it manually controlled. All right, so now that's set up. If I tap on that, um, you can get the measurer anytime you want here. And then I have, we have this card model um, for the, this left swipe right. And we have two events, on like, on dislike. And so here, what we've done is we have this measurer for tracking um, the like image index. So we get a, a index of um, uh, what kind of image was liked. And we have um, a vote as, as the event and we have a variable. So what I'm doing here is actually tracking um, uh, locally kind of the measurement it's not sending to the server right away it's just so we're actually tracking the, the specific um, that I can remove that and just say I don't want to know the index I just want to know there was a like right so I could also do that and just say um, I don't I don't care about which specific animal it was um, and I will just do that and increment you know the value <coughs> And so this gets stored in that queue, that big kind of long-term queue. And then um, I could process that queue later with values um, to say, ah, and then I can dispatch that data when I'm ready for that. So that's the, and you see there's this like count overall that I can send at different times. Um, so I can, um, 
at uh, per session, so the overall total as a as a uh, likes per session is actually um, what we call a private event. So this is part of the differential privacy piece. So I have a total of you know Nathan tracked likes per second or likes per session. So um, and that's stored um, there, and I can go back into our private events here and. Um, this gets into the randomized um, measurement, which ties into ultimately the differential privacy code. So the idea that you might have kind of more public events and private events, um, private, differentially private, um, is we're trying to hide all that complexity. So you're just like, oh, is this kind of a something I'm not worried about measuring or something that I do have concern about measuring? Um, and that it should be that easy. Um, I also wanted to add a new kind of threshold. So we have a geofence threshold. So maybe I only wanted to measure people when they were at pet stores. So, well, how are users in pet stores using my app and looking at animals while kind of measuring them? So you could use a geofence, geofence measurement. Um, so we implemented a custom threshold around geofencing. And then we set a geofence location. Uh, we use Times Square, New York City for some reason, I guess, um, in the demo, but ideally you'd have some known pet stores, maybe a retail chain of pet stores, and you could add these as geofence. So that's a real interesting one. Um, the other, uh, we did a kind of custom threshold in real time of only measure half the time, right? So just, I don't know, don't measure all the time, just measure half the time. So you can really get into this. And so when you add these thresholds, you then, you then in the code, the thresholds, um, every time you call for a measurement, it runs through the list of thresholds and says, are we in a state of matching the thresholds? Should I store this measurement? So that's pretty fun um, and interesting the way that um, it works. So that is um, the idea of cus custom thresholds. And lastly, for now, um, sorry, I just want to see where the dispatch code, oh, here we go. Yeah, so in this case, when we leave the app, the measurements are dispatched to the, the server. Again, you could get more sophisticated to that, but I control in aggregate all of these measurements and when they're sent out to the server um, and, and how they're sent out. So it could be, like I said, daily, weekly, monthly, hourly, um, never, unless you know um, there's some extreme condition. So you can kind of say, well, we do have measurements, we're just not sending them to the server. Can we now send these because you've encountered a problem? And I think that idea of saying, only send stuff once you've encountered a problem is key, um, another key kind of consent. So once again, um, I am going to show you this fun demo app uh, just to, there we go, I wish I, I need to work on Yeah, so now you can, you know, you see the user says, the user doesn't tap on that, but we're still actually gathering measurements locally, we're just not doing anything with them. So that's kind of another consent thing to consider when we're measuring or how to check if you have consent or not. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the, uh, trying to see what else, other things, and that's all the demo shows. Yeah. So, I don't know, I will pause there. Um, we have a nice, you know, collection of friends here. Thank you again for everyone who's joined our inaugural live session. Um, the... There's a lot of info on the website. You know, we're really starting at kind of, even though the concept's been around for a few years, um, we really haven't had funding and time and resources to work on this as code, but we've actually implemented a lot of conceptual work in this area with other kind of um, measurements, you know, we've been asked to do for, for communities and projects. So we've put a lot of energy in, and you can see um, on our blog at Guardian Project, Hans Christoph Steiner's had some things about tracking without tracking and we've done a lot of work in our Jitsi meet that you're on here um, looking at well what's the default kind of metadata or our matrix installations and how can we reduce those significantly 
while still understanding the questions we have and answering specific questions. So we have this kind of in our DNA, in our core, and now we're just really trying to package this up into a reusable SDK that we can use. It's always fun. We, we're our main uh, consumer of our stuff, um, and then our partners, but also the world eventually, and so we're trying to reach out now to have that phase of engagement. So, from the peanut, from the cheap seats at the top in the circus uh, here, any um, comments, questions, boos, hisses? Woo! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One woo. Um, no, I, Carrie. So any any you know now you've seen what piques your interest and you know do you think we're on to something with the consent UI or do you think I mean where do we stand and how do you feel about do you think it what we want to achieve with creating built-in kind of UX for around consent is something that makes sense or is it something that each app needs to consider separately? Yeah. Um, I think, yes, there are a lot of pieces that just make sense right away. Um, I also, in just talking with various teams, there's a desire to kind of understand how people are using the app, which lends to more of maybe um, ongoing tracking. Um, so that type of consent, I want to think more about how that could be more of a modular consent, you know, because I think there's still an opportunity to say, like, to have that be time bound. Um, or to think about some other thresholds. Um, so yeah, I think definitely we're onto something with consent and there's a lot of opportunity and still space to think about it. But. Well, as we said with all of these events, children are welcome and my daughter's here with a technical question. <laughs> Eliza, please come here. What's the problem? <laughs> okay. Well. Well, I can't help you. Every, if everyone else is having the same problem as you, then is there a Zoom? No, it's Google Meet. It's Google Meet. Oh, my goodness. You should be using uh, Jitsi Meet in our Keanu server. You should tell your teachers that because uh, these proprietary software systems are really not helpful. Um, duh, 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 10.30 review. Okay. Well, I think they'll give you more time. I would say... Uh, just stick in there and they'll post a link when you're ready, okay? Don't worry about it. All right, I'm back. Do you wanna say hi? No. It's the world, the internet. Okay. Um, so is the life, see? But she's, my daughter's doing amazing work with dealing with all of this craziness in the world. Huh? Google Meet. Google Meet. Oh, Zoom. Yeah, fun times. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I mean, uh, we're, we know that developers love things that make their lives easier and save them time and make them look good. So a lot of it is that as a goal. Um, and I think hopefully we can standardize on some things. And as you saw with the SDK, there's a lot built in, but there's also a lot of way to cus customization, right? So um, I think we're, we're going for both both sides of that. There's some other questions being typed in here. Mute Sorry, keyboard lost connection. Took me a while to reconnect. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Well, um, and I don't know if the way I'm recording this, I don't think I'm going to be getting all of the participation from Jitsi Meet, unfortunately. I don't even know if I'm getting my own mic. I'm still new to a lot of this stuff. Um, so one of the things we'll be doing too is a, th a better threat modeling. Um, we have some of it, again, in the, some of the various specs and SDKs, and there's a lot of great content that was worked on a couple of years ago that we're updating and refreshing. Um, the, um, you know, but really talking about, well, what kind of, what do you need to consider when configuring thresholds? And, um, and we're trying to ask these hard questions. You know, I've invited um, Briar, I think we're reaching out to Delta Chat, to you know, for folks from Tor, 
maybe signal even and all these and say well do you measure if not would you ever consider if so how um, you know we have models like Tor metrics the Debian popularity contest um, that there are a lot of ways to that are useful to measure and, and people are, are pleased happy with them uh, participating in them so um, yeah and then you know we're, we're gonna have some funders on as well um, one might be here in the room but um, to say well what is it you care to know about the effectiveness of your grants right or or your investments or you know is it okay if you know, do you understand that the data produced for measuring is toxic and harmful and um, if it just sits around and people don't take care with it and how can we minimize that so we just measure what's necessary and you know can you get on board with this kind of approach are you already on board where have you had success so we're really excited to talk to those folks who were you know rightly saying like are you doing the things you said you would do and how do you know and I know Tor metrics came out of that early on it was like well how do we know if anyone's using this how do we know if suddenly there's a spike in one part of the world how do we know if you know bridges are blocked in in and users in this country or tours blocked and everyone in this area is using bridges so these are important things that needed to be instrumented as part of the tour network and they had to be built in kind of at the core um, and so we're we're trying to think about how we could utilize that too. There's some more chat. Oh, that wasn't meant to be read aloud. Here's a question. What about an iOS version? Well, Benjamin, funny you should ask that because you may be playing an instrumental role in implementing the iOS version of this, so get ready. <laughs> um, Benjamin, actually, who's in, in the session with us, is uh, the, the uh, along with Mike Tegas, sort of the Onion browser for iOS developer and works on a lot of other great iOS projects like uh, Save from Open Archive, um, our Keanu Matrix client, and, um, and we'll hopefully be getting involved in bringing this to iOS. Um, I do, I mean, iOS, there's always uh, challenges. On the other hand, I feel, uh, you know, things like integrating Tor will always be tricky just the size of the binary but compared to other things we're trying to do on iOS like you know background nearby or Tor VPNs or um, you know uh, sensor collection in a passive way this feels like it will have a much fewer roadblocks I really uh, feel like and we we already have models like the Matomo open source code which you know we built built on already here for Android there's a lot of great models we can build on to, to tap into certain backends that already have open source code. And so we kind of understand the, the strength and weaknesses there. And we also have great models for open source adoption of open source libraries we've worked on around like say SQL Cypher or Tor Framework or, you know, we, we have a lot, a lot of understanding from you and from others. So this should be a breeze um, <laughs> compared to the rest of our work in iOS. Um, we, we have reached out to Matomo um, and uh, I've invited them to participate in the symposium somehow at some point. And I think they, sh you know, it's an interesting idea that we're going to build alternative client infrastructure or client SDKs for their, their backend. Um, I, I, they should be open to that, I hope. Um, I think we also want to support not using, you know, just simple weblog kind of pings, you know, if people just want it to go to like a, a self-hosted kind of simpler backend. But I do, you know, I do think as great as Matomo is, we could actually add a lot more with the capabilities we're talking about, um, especially if, if we start promoting it as kind of the, the best choice default for human rights, humanitarian self-hosted measurement um, systems. And so we are planning to put up metrics.cleaninsights.org as a free public Matomo instance that any developer could utilize during development, prototyping, or forever, really, if they want to. Um, and we can keep running it um, for them. So I think there's going to be a lot of yeah, marketing cross-support. Um, but we really don't want to get involved in building and servers and customizing and so you know that's why they are a good fit for us to rely on so yeah i hope to hear from them um you know and we've we've had great relationships with the matrix folks with the um zamod.org help desk uh 
that we build on for other systems. So we're excited to keep playing that role of uh, finding compatible vendors for the human rights and humanitarian use cases. Um, the, you know what the real challenge ultimately is, uh, is does this work for desktop apps uh, written in Node.js? Uh, does this work for web apps? Does this work for server apps? You know, could something like this be built into operating systems like Tails and Cubes and Calyx OS? Um, um, our, our apps, the work we do would be at Save, Onion Browser, Keanu, um, Orbot, uh, uh, F-Droid, hopefully. It's pretty clear how, you know, those are the ringers. Those are the, um, the, the featured acts that in our three-ring circus that will be quite easy for us to get on board. But can we get uh, Tails? And I, I know uh, some of the Tails folks are, are listening on email and maybe here. And um, I'm curious, you know, if they could find a way to do this safely. And maybe they've thought about it. Um, uh, again, Briar and uh, Calyx OS and others there. Um, so we'll see. There's going to definitely be some more. Uh, uh, we and we want we we know our limits too. So um, we know that uh, it may uh, ultimately not work for everyone, um, and that's fine too. Um, but yeah, there's definitely. The, the goal here is going to be to kind of do a quick iteration uh, to finish out iOS and Android and maybe something in Node, again, built on PWIC. And then to, um, you know, to get stuff out and working so we can keep learning and to, to try to keep, you know, and, and the differential privacy piece is probably going to be kind of phase two separated um, out um, so we don't have to get stuck on that um, and and really to, to just move it forward to ship something that's stable and works. You know, I think we're actually pretty close on Android. I'm, I'm ex I, I like what we have there, um, but we just need to start using it and, and seeing how it works in practice. So hopefully we can move on to iOS pretty quickly and something in JavaScript so that Node and web apps could utilize it that way. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be rolling. Well, we're coming up on uh, about an hour here, and um, I'm sure I have some other homeschooling uh, duties, some lions to tame, some kittens to get to jump through flaming rings. Um, thank you all for joining live. Um, I know that live is, your time is precious uh, right now, especially live attention. Um, please uh, check out the podcasts. We'll have some blog posts. We have a cool report coming out that the Dear Data activity could be something fun if you have a little time, like an inner into like artsy design thinking, wonderful, you know, and, and taking a moment away from screens. Like we really are trying to find ways through the podcast and through these activities to do some stuff away from screens when maybe you don't want to be, um, you know, just staring at a screen, but that's still thinking. So, you know, if you already track stuff, um, you know, I, I track uh, the ocean and waves and um, my surfing and things like that. So I'm probably going to just do something related to something I love that I want to share that I measure in a way that's important to me. So it could also be a way to know each other. Um, this video will be posted on our YouTube channel oh, and archive.org actually too. Um, for less tracking. I maybe even an IPFS. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I hope the audio is recorded. If this doesn't have audio, I don't know if I'm going to post it, but maybe I'll do a clip and I'll do some voiceover. Thank you for being in our grand experiment in the Symposium Extraordinaire today. We will wrap it up here with our fun and fantastic uh, circus extravaganza uh, video. Da, 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 da. Here I am at the circus. Dun, dun, da, 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 dun, dun, dun. And maybe a um, and have a wonderful Friday and weekend to all of you out there. Go drink some soda pop. Have some cotton elephant. candy. Uh, now enjoy folks, time. Step right this uh, way to the bigger, better, it's more exciting sideshow. Exciting show you've ever seen. Keep at it. And See you on the next every Friday live. 
and this Tuesday a live chat and more coming asynchronously. Here.